Hi guys, we are going to discuss stages of anesthesia based on a Gradle's classification. As to get um, a little bit intro introduction part to understand that in the past it was a really a problem to understand how much anesthesia to give to the patient and at which stages right now patient to add some drugs or not and which one to pass for uh, skipping some uh, possible complications. And in 1937, the Dr. Arthur uh, Gradel created uh, the first safety system in anesthesiology with a chart that explained uh, the stages of general anesthesia with an increasing dips uh, ranging from stage one to, uh, to stage four. Uh, many words uh, regarding general anesthesia is uh, the general anesthesia is a medical induced loss of consciousness with concurrent loss of protective rex uh, reflexes. Uh, protective uh, reflexes could be like uh, coughing or swelling of s saliva or anything like that that we are doing uh, day by day and making pro protection of the respiratory uh, tract or respiratory pathway as well and medications that can induce loss of uh, consciousness or unconsciousness uh, amnesia analgesia skeletal muscle relaxation and the loss of autonomic system reflexes autonomic system reflexes autonomic uh, system uh, do apply to the every organ system some reflexes like tachycardia to the uh, cardiovascular tachycardia or bradycardia uh, to the uh, vessels like increasing a, or decreasing a total peripheral resistance for respiratory system, increase respiratory rate or decrease uh, for gastrointestinal like uh, uh, vomiting or uh, prokinetic effect for uh, urinary system to urinary retention or diuresis and so ahead for every of the system. So during general anesthesia, patient become an arousal to verbal, tactile or painful stimuli or by other words, to any uh, external stimuli. And uh, one of the components that upper airway obstruction occur during general anesthesia and necessitates the insertion of any of the protecting tube like laryngeal mask or endotracheal tube to preserve airway uh, patency. As we told, Dr. Arthur uh, Gradel created and developed this system to understand better where the patient is and at which level of or deepness of anesthesia. So he developed uh, four stages like uh, stage one, analgesia and disorientations, again with excitement or delirium. A third uh, is surgical anesthesia and it's a uh, a golden stage uh, that we have to achieve during uh, any of the surgical procedure if it is a general anesthesia and not sedation or any other type and overdose that is uh, accompanied with complication and even death sometimes. Uh, stage one can be initiated in the holding area so is a, a, pre a surgical room where uh, and it's called induction uh, stage where patient can be sedated or given some medication to prepare and a little bit diminish anxiety and uh, agitation. And you see some changes um, in an autonomic nervous system uh, reaction like breathing is slow and regular and patient progresses from analgesia free of amnesia to analgesia with concurrent amnesia. So patient is conscious, is arousal and can communicate with you even after applying some medication. This stage ends with the loss of consciousness. Till the end, a uh, patient can lose consciousness. The second one is excitement and, or delirium and uh, marked by features such as disinhibition, delirium and controlled movements of any parts of the body, uh, loss of eyelash reflex, uh, hypertension and tachycardia. Airways remain intact during this uh, phase and are often hypersensitive to stimulation. And at this stage, you should pay attention if you are anesthesiologist and do not make uh, 
uh, some evident uh, manipulations to the airways as they can uh, uh, precipitate laryngospasm, very high risk of laryngospasm at this stage. So you have to pass this stage if you want to uh, make, for example, intubation or placement of the endotracheal tube. And fast acting agents help to reduce the time spent in stage two as much as possible and facilitate entry to stage three. So I'll strongly recommend you to uh, make uh, deep anesthesia and add some dosage uh, to pass this stage and after make possible to uh, facilitate the entry into the next stage and to place of uh, endotracheal tube. And the stage three, which is surgical anesthesia, and it's a targeted anesthetic level for procedures requiring general anesthesia. So season I uh, movements and respiratory depression are the hallmarks of this stage. And uh, at this level, any of the airway manipulations are uh, safe and can be done. Uh, still uh, regular spontaneous breathing a con uh, constricted pupil, central gaze, however, eyelid, conjunctival and uh, uh, swallow reflexes usually disappear. You should be careful at this stage, like aspiration of any of the uh, liquids like saliva or anything like that to aspire and do not allow to enter into uh, respiratory airways. Intermittent cessation, uh, cessations of respiration along with the loss of corneal and laryngeal reflexes. Halted ocular movements and increased lacrimation. You can see some lacrimation at patients and you don't have to worry regarding this as this is a, a stage three of uh, anesthesia. Complete relaxation of the intercostal and abdominal muscles and loss of the pupillary light reflex or also known as true surgical anesthesia, complete relaxation of the muscles, loss of pupillary light reflex, and pinpoint if you are administering, of course, opioids, that is classical pinpoint pupils. Irregular respiration, paradoxical rib cage movement, and full diaphragm paralysis resulting in apnea after you administer a dosage required for general anesthesia and stage three, you have to make a ventilation of patient and uh, uh, take uh, all the functions like respiratory mostly to the uh, ventilatory machine. And stage four, which is overdose, occurs when too much anesthetic agent uh, is given relative to the amount of surgical manipulation and to the body weight of the patient, which result in a worsening of an already a severe brain or medullary depression. As you know, most of our uh, anesthetic drugs have depression effects out of ketamine or uh, most of them uh, have um, depressive effect on all uh, organ systems. And this stage begins with the respiratory cessation and can uh, end with potential uh, dangerous effect like this. Undecided, of course. Uh, skeletal muscles are flaccid and pupils are fixed and they and dilated at this stage, blood pressure significantly lower than normal and weak and 3D pulses. Without cardiovascular and respiratory support, this stage is less. As you see that patient is going with uh, low blood pressure, low pulse or high pulse or, uh, or anything like that, you have to uh, give some uh, vasopressors to increase blood pressure to uh, maintain a uh, vital size. Anesthetist's uh, goal is to trans, uh, transition the patient as soon as possible to stage three of anesthesia and keep them there for the duration of the operation. How you can uh, uh, back patient to the stage three is like uh, make adequate perfusion of the organs like making infusion uh, even to stop uh, drugs administration, of course, it, if it is going through the uh, infusion pump or inhalatory anesthetics to stop uh, administration of any drugs that is continuing or dose related and to allow patient to uh, come back to the uh, stage three. Issue of concern. So general anesthesia induces physiological responses, potentially resulting in morbidity and mortality with emergency situations especially. 
but uh, mortality directly from anesthesia is rare at this time but may result from uh, pulmonary aspiration and Mendelssohn syndrome or, or pulmonary aspiration of the gastric contents asphyxiation uh, from improper uh, ventilation of patient in stage 3 and, and 4 and or anaphylaxis. So these adverse events may result from anesthesia related equipment for example, ventilatory machines have some issue and do not produce uh, ventilation or fa fa uh, failure of equipment and human error. And mortality rates attributable to anesthesia have decreased over the last decades as ventilatory ma machine uh, is much better and uh, uh, a lot of drug uh, develops these days like propofol, like midazolam, uh, fentanyl, sulfentanyl, L-fentanyl, and of course, a volatile anesthetics, which give us uh, many options of, of anesthesia uh, to make a plan which drugs to use and for every patient impaired. And anesthesia today is generally considered safe and effective. That's why, uh, why it's an applicable and uh, moment for us. Uh, Guadel's classification for the stage of general anesthesia was initially established to deliver uh, the seal uh, ETER, which is gas and a single available uh, volatile anesthetic at that time when he activated. While uh, Guadel's patients were usually premedicated with sedative agents such as morphine and atropine to decrease secretions, and today, the balanced anesthesia approach uses several types of medication, as I told you, for induction, IV or uh, inhalatory anesthetics, uh, analgesics, uh, neuromuscle uh, blocking drugs, and benzodiazepines. Thank you very much and have a great time, guys. If you like these videos, you can subscribe and follow me on YouTube or on any of the uh, social media.